welcome. Welcome. I came in on a parachute. Started way up in the sky. But now here I am with my feet on the ground, but still reaching for the stars. That's right. I believe it was the late question mark, Casey Kasem, who told us, keep your feet on the ground and keep reaching for the stars. What? (laughs) What's the message here? (laughs) Always remember, you will never get those stars. Keep your feet on the ground. What? Do I have the power to do otherwise? Are you saying if I jumped, I could get those stars? Running jump. You know, we all have flying dreams, ladies and gentlemen. If you don't, I'm very sorry, because they're the best. I wish I could just program myself to do that. Oh, what about lucid dreaming? I don't have time. Learn lucid dreaming. I'm keeping my feet on the ground. The flying dreams, we all have our own method of flying in the dreams. Mine involves taking a running jump to get into the air. It's a little clunky. It's inelegant, but effective. And perhaps I got that idea from the moldy old television program, The Greatest American Hero which was an hour-long dramedy? <laughs> what would you call it? <laughs> I mean, I guess, I guess ostensibly it was a drama, but it was d- dumb. Now, as a child, I loved it and hated it because it was about an ordinary fellow. He was a teacher, originally named Ralph Hinckley, Then a guy named Hinckley shot the president, and they hurriedly changed his name to Ralph Haley. That is 100% true, and I remember watching the episode with the crude overdub of the last name, (laughs) which I think might have been a day, the day or the next day after Reagan was shot. (laughs) And aliens give him this super suit, superhero suit, that enables him to do all these superhero things. But the instruction manual... It's in alien language, so he doesn't know how any of it works. Which, that's where the... (laughs) Yeah, you know what? Exactly. That's where the comedy came in. But as a child, it was very frustrating. Week after week after week, they would show him flying. And the flying was always like... Hey, dude, you've had this suit for months. You you haven't learned how to stabilize yourself? Another flying gripe. Y'all remember that show Heroes? <clears throat> Where what's his name from Prophet? <laughs> That's, that doesn't help anyone. <laughs> TV show that aired three times? <laughs> you remember the star of Prophet? I, I'm blanking on the guy's name. He's on Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D. now from time to time. He played a secret superhero who had the ability to fly, and he, he didn't like it. <laughs> what? <laughs> the most unbelievable thing about the entire show. It's like, oh, I'm cursed with the ability to fly. <laughs> the fuck out of here. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to Spontane Nation with Paul F. Tompkins. I am the second part. This is a show where I invite a special guest or guests onto the program to have a free-form conversation with me inspired by a blind question from our previous episode's guest. Then, I invite some improviser pals onto the program to join me in a narrative improv that is one continuous story as opposed to unconnected scenes, often employing details gleaned from the conversation with aforementioned special guest. And it is all scored on piano by Mr. Eben Schletter. That's what he goes like. Ladies and gentlemen, I'm very excited 
to welcome this duo to the show. Their first time on. They are new to the Earwolf family. Their fantastic podcast, Throwing Shade, has been running for many years now. People seem to like it. It's doing uh, okay. (laughs) They are taking it on the road starting September 14th. Check it out. Maybe they're coming to a town near you or the town where you live. (laughs) 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 Please welcome to Spot Tady Nation, Aaron Gibson and Brian Safi. It is so hard not to laugh when you're doing... Your intro that oh you're allowed to laugh I should oh, have said I didn't know that <laughs> I thought people just did not like me. Oh, no. <laughs> <laughs> we can't look at you <laughs> yeah. guys welcome to the oh, show so thank happy you to be here. it's such a pleasure to have you um, your podcast throwing shade is fantastic it is now on the Earwolf Network uh, I if you're if you're not familiar with the show check it out if you want to start with an episode start with the one that I just did with these guys. We had so much it, fun. I don't know what was going on. It, it was, was a trip. I mean, it truly was a, like, <laughs> I was high as a kite. <laughs> Brian on was on cold medicine. medicine yeah. And it was just questions from every angle. You know what? It was just three old pals having a good old time. <laughs> yeah. That's all it is. But I was worried that people weren't going to, that it was just going to be so self-indulgent that people were going to enjoy it. And they loved it. I People really responded to it. I don't think it was self-indulgent. I think we covered a lot of ground. We did. And we were very helpful. We talked about Kenneth Branagh. We talked about Girls Trip. We talked about Carrots. (laughs) We talked about Dayquil. That's right. I mean, I don't know what, really. What was left left No stone was left unturned. Everybody. We talked about women having heart attacks in movies. Now, did you, on Twitter, (laughs) because Brian brought up, you never see women have heart attacks in movies or on TV. It's always men. Always men. And then someone on Twitter wrote to, I think, all of us and said, I know why you never see women have heart attacks. Oh, okay. Because and then silence. <laughs> well, someone, <laughs> someone, someone d- d- um, it, it tweeted me and said, and maybe it was to all of us, and said, the only, and I couldn't think of one, they did, about Schmidt. I guess his <laughs> wife dies oh, of a right. heart attack. So that's the one. Do we see it on screen? I don't know. No, I think no. She, he walks in, I think, and she's sort of planking. <laughs> or, planking. or whatever. She's, she's doing, like face she's down. She's doing her core work, but on the ground. <laughs> flat on the ground. <laughs> <laughs> whatever. But I think, doesn't he ask her, are you planking? <laughs> yeah. And then no response. And he's like, oh. No response. <laughs> no response. This isn't she's, and then he's happy she's dead because she's not up on the latest trends. Right. So... <laughs> It's all about it's those It's a great ads. movie. Yeah, it's yeah. a great movie. Did, did Olive Kittredge have a heart attack? I don't know. All Does I remember- it seem like why she did? Why do women yes. die in movies if it's not tragic? <laughs> no, I feel like it's mostly like a love crime yeah. or um, cancer random, or- Yeah, exactly. Random crime, yeah. How many women have contracted diabetes in the movies? Well, uh, I can't think of first one. First of all, it's diabetes. <laughs> <laughs> diabetes. Second of all, I, don't I can't think of diabetes. one. I don't know. <laughs> Yeah. Hmm. Well, think of how many old people are in fried green tomatoes and none of them die. Except, oh wait, no one. No, she. A the B one dies. The one that the old. The tomato dies. Yeah. The tomato. The titular the tomato. tomato. Guys, I have a question for you from our previous episodes guest. Oh, our previous episodes guest Maria Blasucci and Amanda Lund, our old friends Beans. One or both of them ask this question. What time period do you think you belong in? Oh, I know oh, exactly wow. the time. Wow. And I'm sorry. I this is, Aaron has been waiting for this question. I feel like for me, because in, in the world of Hollywood, yes. I fit in. Oh, I'm sorry. In the world of Hollywood, darling. Hollywood, darling. In the world of Hollywood, darling. <laughs> I think I am 1980s orchestra hot. Mm. Orchestra hot. What does like, that mean? Like. Like Sigourney Weaver, oh, like whoa, 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 whoa. weird, like an interesting looking woman who isn't necessarily third ha- chair cello doesn't have like <laughs> pillow lips. Yeah, yeah, doesn't have like huge boobies, right? Big old DSL lips. You know what I mean? I'm not that. That's like ATM machine. By yes. Oh, sorry, DSLs. <laughs> oh, that's right. 
I have I have small Irish eyes. Yeah, no one ever lips. looks at an orchestra and thinks, which one of these is going to suck my dick? <laughs> <laughs> well, <laughs> when was the last time you went to Vivaldi or whatever? Excuse me, Thursday night. Okay. I went to go see <laughs> Tchaikovsky at the Hollywood Bowl. Wow. I mean, Tchaikovsky's dead, <laughs> but I saw... <laughs> <laughs> Johnny oh, they, did the hol- they did the hologram, right? Uh, he did. They did the hologram. It went. Who was the first? Tupac. It went. Tupac. Yeah. Left eye. Tchaikovsky. <laughs> right. Elvis is somewhere. In there. Elvis. Yeah. I just think. I think there is a definite look that I have, and mm-hmm. I think I would be more successful in Hollywood as an actress if I was living in the eighties. <laughs> All right. I have crazy hair. I have. Why do you say you have crazy hair? No, I mean hair. like you could you could be weird looking and be successful in the eighties. And here, I feel like today's time you have to look like a a Playboy bunny. I totally understand. I'm just taking issue with the hair. Is there are do, are you doing stuff to your hair, or is this just the way that it not looks? drying it? Yeah, this is natural. But, but your I hair can make is it weird. <laughs> yeah. But what I'm, guys, what I'm saying is I want to have long DSL <laughs> layers. You know what I mean? Right. I have DSL Dick sucking hair. eye shadow, yeah. you know? Sure. <laughs> My glasses aren't DSL glasses. <laughs> right. Brian, That's what, the short answer. What about you? You know, I, 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 I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to do two answers. The first one is... I mean, honestly, like 20 years from now, it's really only getting better for gay people. (laughs) See, (laughs) we never say there's no other time period I'd want to live in. Um, Other than that, the 70s, just because I think, I don't know. I mean, I think everyone wishes they could have sex more. And Mm -hmm. I feel like in the 70s, you was pretty, you just went to a clinic the next day and it was okay. So I feel like it would have been (laughs) They didn't know the 80s was coming. Right. And like everyone was sort of getting on board with everything and post Nixon and just Screw it. Let's just have fun. I think that would have been a good time. And yeah, it was before the like halt of the 80s. So I think I would have, I think I would have been, I think I would have had a lot of fun in the 70s. Who are the people? I think you would also look good in those colors. (laughs) <laughs> Orange and brown. Yeah. I do. A lot of earth tones. A lot of I earth tones. I don't mean that. I mean, you look good in neutrals. Avocado. <laughs> Thank you. Yeah. <laughs> exactly. Like a dull magenta. Ba- yeah. Just <laughs> baby food colors. <laughs> then we get to the 80s and it's all primaries, baby. It I'm is. back. Jewel tones. Give me those jewel <laughs> tones, baby. Right. Yeah. Give me that emerald green. Who are the people? So you mentioned Sigourney Weaver. Who are the, the people from the, from those eras that you think of as like that's the cool person from that era. Freddie Mercury, I think. How about is, it? Is probably the coolest. I when I hear Freddie Mercury, I always think of Live Aid Freddie Mercury. Yeah. In the in the the wife beater. Totally. We don't say that. So anymore. no, but like <laughs> it's a drag. What, what do we have to replace it <laughs> yeah. with? Freddie Mercury, David Bowie, the whole like gender fuck thing was yeah. just the best. Sigourney Weaver. Sigourney Weaver. Well, because she got to play smart women, and she also got to play like badass women. Mm-hmm. She was That's an true. action hero. She yeah. was. Yeah. She was all over the place. Linda in the Hamilton's a close second. Mm-hmm. But she, from just that one movie though, I know, right? it was just that one. But she- What, Terminator? Terminator yeah. 2. Or Alien. Or Terminator 2 is the one where- she, where, she, where, she, where she's she's doing, doing what you're chin-ups. Doing. Yeah. Uh, where <laughs> Linda Hamilton was super buff. Yeah. Doing pull-ps at a, on a psych ward bed. Yeah, that's right. Yeah. That's the exercise. I go to that gym. <laughs> <laughs> They just have old psych word. Why hasn't that furniture. become a themed gym? Don't you think? It should be. After CrossFit, anything's possible. Absolutely. Tractor tire exercises? Mm-hmm. Why not? Who? What about you? Oh, now, oh, we're sorry. not Is here to not, interview Okay, me. got it, got it, got it, got it. <laughs> <laughs> I, I believe you. So I believe you found out plenty about me when okay, I was on okay. your show. <laughs> but you don't like carrots? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I wait, not, did we find out there? I said it before, you. and I'll say it again. <laughs> I do not like carrots. And you're a day quill, night quill kind of guy. <laughs> we found that out too. That's right. Just twenty four seven. Yeah, <laughs> love it. Goodbye, liver. <laughs> Um, Aaron, so when you saw when you saw Ghostbusters, which was was that the first your first Sigourney, Sigourney Weaver, Weaver encounter? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> well, I just oh, you know what's great about her in Ghostbusters uh, in the, all the Ghostbusters canon? <laughs> she can do anything. She's a cellist in one. Right. She's restoring paintings at the. Oh, that's right. Yeah. <laughs> no explanation. She's what? an expert in a totally different field in the sequel. <laughs> 
It's crazy. What smart ah. thing can't she do? I'm yeah, she's give with up. the New York Phil and then with the Metropolitan. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, I'm gonna give up music so I can get into maybe one of the most tedious occupations <laughs> anyone can ever. Well, you have to have like decades of experience. <laughs> yeah. Well, oh. both are very. I can't think of two more disciplined professions <laughs> to excel. But I mean, not, you have to be disciplined, but not interchangeable. Not at all. No. Not even adjacent. No. And then she got to go to space. And fight aliens and, you know. Different character, though, to be fair. Oh, to be fair. Sorry, <laughs> right, right. That's, that's not, not the Ghostbusters. Same. That's Do not you the same. think that Ripley in Alien is a descendant of whatever her name was in Ghostbusters? You mean like a, like a future relative? Yeah, yeah absolutely. Because why wouldn't <laughs> someone with Sigourney Weaver's DNA not be able to then figure out how to run a spaceship right. and machine guns in the future. So they exist in the same universe, Ghostbusters and Alien. To me. Well, also, they're like fantasy, mm-hmm. science fiction with Sigourney Weaver. <laughs> a, a Ripley. But you know how they do Alien versus Predator? Yes. Yeah. Ripley versus Zool would be, oh. that would be an event. I would watch that. <laughs> I was for sure. Because they are sort of opposites. You know, I was thinking about, you know, I was thinking about Zool the other day. (laughs) And for some reason, I remember that this, she's supposed to be like some ancient Sumerian, you know, evil entity or whatever. (laughs) Why is she wearing high heels? (laughs) There's a a close up of her. She like flies through the air and then she lands and there's a close up of her feet landing on the ground through her her legs. We see the Ghostbusters. She's wearing fucking. I heal. That's crazy. It's insane. Well, <laughs> what a weird choice. Yeah, because the dress almost gets you there. Wait, did she no, wear a dress? No, 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 that's Sigourney Weaver. Oh, okay, sorry. She's wearing like a body She's just wearing a body thing. suit. That's yeah. right. Yeah, that's crazy. She, um, so heels were invented mm-hmm. by like ninth century Persian horseback riders is they're traditionally a male's, a, ma- a man's. Do they go back that yeah. far? Yeah, they're, they're, it's, to it's to keep your stirrups St- stay. That makes sense. Yeah. And well, then, because you hook, you would hook into the stirrup that way. And then people were like, "Oh, you're rich enough to have a horse. Why not wear those shoes all the time to brag to everybody <laughs> that you've got a lot of gold bags or whatever?" Oh. And then so it was adopted as like a, like a, you know, piece of like, clothing, like mm-hmm. the way people drive Ferraris or something. exactly, yeah. just like that, <laughs> or like the whatever that the winged cars are. I do want to say I love my Ferrari. So if anyone, sure. uh, would, that's, if I could, one recommendation I have on this podcast is to get a Ferrari. Well, I figured you got your Ferrari, <laughs> your Ferrari bomber jacket on. Exactly, you got your Ferrari hat. Head to toe. I'm learning <laughs> Italian. Like I would, if if what I. What does Ferrari mean in Italian? It means he who seeks luxury. <laughs> <laughs> it's a long, a lot of words for just one. Yeah, it's I'm like not going to explain it. You would say this this uh, gentleman, he's a un Ferraro. Exactly, oh. si. exactly, exactly. Si. That's great. Yeah. And how much do you charge for rides? Uh, what kind of ride, baby? Ah, <laughs> 70s, five cents. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, Did you ever see, Brian, yeah. the movie, is it called The Boys in the Band? Yeah. That movie, it's, it's insane. insane. It's insane. But Are you ins- in a Bette Midler movie? No, no that's, that's for, for the, the boys. boys. <laughs> <laughs> the boys I've in the band. I've never been more insulted in my <laughs> life. The, the boys in the band was originally a play, and I think it was kind of groundbreaking in that it was a group of gay male friends in the 70s sort of yeah. having a fun night together, but then gets really dark yeah. and really mean and bitter yeah. and shitty Turning. and like they turn on each other yes. Turning. yeah <laughs> that guy it's it's an incredible movie if yeah you, people should seek it out because I, I haven't seen it in years yep I'd like to see it again is it's it from the 70s yeah. yeah 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 yep no way it's very 70s yes oh it's all the like, way 70s. everyone is like ugly hot yeah you know that weird thing yes. where it's like I love just it. Just put a paper towel on your, you know what I mean? Like blot. <laughs> like everyone is just, do you know what I mean? Just like that shiny, shiny <laughs> huge pores. Just like, I don't. Volcano just, faces. Yeah. Just like, I'm going to diet. What is it? Plain bagels. Like, you know what I mean? Just like, just like I'm that 70s unhealthy <laughs> egg cup, like gross. What's an egg cup? It was a, 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 um, a dish that you, that they used to, that people used to have that was this, like just a little round thing that you put for a hard boiled egg for, in. Yeah. For a soft oh. boiled egg. Or soft boiled eggs. Yeah. Oh, I thought it was And you would eat like it a, out of the egg cup. Oh, there see. was recently, um, there was some, I saw this on Twitter that, that, uh, I guess a lot of Americans, egg cups are not as common here 
as they are uh, like Europe? In, in, <laughs> people are still like doing that wow exactly that's how I feel about that's it that's crazy like well, we don't have to do that it's anymore it's so impractical wait, wait, I, we have them because my husband is Italian See. so he ha- then why did you ask prego. what they were uh, because he doesn't call them egg cups oh. that's not like como se dice como se dice como se dice <laughs> yep. He doesn't call him that. I don't know what he calls. He calls him something fancy and like French sounding. Sure. B- boulangerie. Boulangerie. <laughs> lingerie. Yes. <laughs> Can I? I'll have my egg in a lingerie, please. That's my favorite French word. <laughs> Food Lab on Santa Monica serves you eggs in those things. Food Lab. <laughs> They're back there with their scientist codes. Restaurant names are getting bad. Yeah. And there's I a place that I refuse to eat at out of principle is Egg Slut. <laughs> Do you want to know? I went there yesterday for the first time. Uh, and people to, say it's great. It's You know what? It was, but that name is so stupid. It drives me crazy. It it's started so as stupid. a truck and I would see it around town and I would go, that's never going to work out. <laughs> I don't know anything about nothing. Well, you know what? The joke's on them because- um, well, I, well, okay, because <laughs> they can only really exist on the coasts. No one in no one in Texas is interested right. in X Life. They'll and never be able to go to the flyovers. That's right, and I think that's the last laugh. And we, we've seen time and again, <laughs> guys. Thank you so much for being here, Aaron Gibson, Dream. Brian Safi. Where does your tour start? In San Francisco. Home of no, the that's glass. a lie. In Seattle. <laughs> in Seattle, the Northwest is where we're starting. San Francisco, Home of the Portland, glass coffee Seattle. Cups, yeah, exactly. <laughs> Throwing shade. Right. Com slash tour. There you go. And that's all the information. Um, We're if, allowed to give. It, <laughs> <laughs> well, here's the thing. You go to the website, you find out there's a treasure map. The treasure map will tell you <laughs> all the stops along the tour. And the winner gets the golden egg cup. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, we're going to take a break. And when we come back from the break, we will meet our improvisers. Meantime, listen to this ad. Welcome back! (laughs) (laughs) Ladies and gentlemen, it is time to meet our friends from the land of (laughs) make-pretends. I'm seated right next to me. I'm looking at this guy. He's not only the star of the television series Shrink. Formerly of CISO? (laughs) Yeah, formerly of Earth? (laughs) We'll see. We'll see. It must live on somewhere. (laughs) It must. I hope so, yeah. Also, my co-star on Bajillion Dollar Properties. Hopefully that's somewhere else, too. I'm sure it will be. Got a whole fourth season just dying to be seen by people. In the can. In the can. Who wouldn't want to buy something with something in the can? (laughs) Wait, I get all of this bounty plus what's in the can? (laughs) And it's not a mystery what's in the can, either. No, we love it, and we can't wait for people to see it. it. It will end up someplace. It will end up someplace as... This gentleman has ended up here. His name is Tim Baltz. Tim, welcome back to the show. Thank you very much, Paul. How have you been? I feel like I haven't seen you in quite some time. I've been good. I traveled a little bit over the summer. I went back to see my You folks. went to France. I did, yeah. Tim sent us. We have... I went to France. <laughs> at, look, at longtime listeners will know, I am a member of several group text chains. <laughs> <laughs> Oh boy. And uh, there's Bajillion Dollar Properties has one. And uh, Tim sent us some fucking hilarious videos. He was up very late. Oh boy. In France, in Paris. Well, this was after Dan, because Dan was there. Dan Adute was there Dan a Adute. month before. That's right. And he is a big foodie. Mm-hmm. And so he got the hookup from all these people <laughs> in Paris. Because he was a guy. Yeah. And he went to all these restaurants and he just covered all of them extensively and would send us these videos and these pictures. Yeah. Uh, and then I went a few weeks later because my mom is French. Uh, so oui. I, I go, we, oui, we. Oui. <laughs> <laughs> it is true. <laughs> Surprise. <laughs> Comment dit-on, yes. <laughs> um, what? Egg cup. <laughs> I, no joke. I used to eat eggs out of those. <laughs> and I, I didn't like eggs at all. And so I looked at it as this doubly gross thing where I'm yeah. like, you're going to make me eat eggs then you're going to make me scoop it out of this weird contraption <laughs> yeah. that looks like some kind of punishment. <laughs> tap it with a knife. Oh. <laughs> I hated it. You're going to yeah. tap an egg with a knife? <laughs> what <are> you? <laughs> so, so you went to France. So I went there and then, uh, you know, at a certain point I got very drunk one night 
at a French improv party. <laughs> and on the way back, sent a lot of videos. Uh, Tim is uh, bilingual and speaks fluent French. And so is able to do <laughs> improv in French. And you, there was this guy... Did you, was he another improviser? Yeah, yeah. Great guy, very hilarious, also named Tim. Yeah, and so Tim sent his videos of this guy just all over Paris, right? We we were on the outskirts of Paris, and then we walked back into Paris at, at like four in the morning. And I was like, hey, will you do some videos for Bajillion Dollar Properties? And he's like, of course. <laughs> and... Uh, so I hope these never see the light of day. We were so drunk. <laughs> <laughs> and so this guy, Tim just films this guy yelling the word bajillion. And it takes him a, it takes him a long time to get the, the name down. Well, yeah. And, and the premise of the show, like each time we're doing, I'm like close, but uh, and then I'd explain a little bit more and he'd be like, okay, okay, we'll do another one in like 10 minutes. But we, we just keep getting drunker the more time goes on. We got to post some. Please ask him. Eventually. Yeah, Come I on. will. I okay. Will. All right. Tim, I'm done with you. <laughs> I'm going to look kitty corner from you, meow. <laughs> ruff, ruff. <laughs> <laughs> Seated right across from me, making her first return to yes. the show. Mm -hmm. Member of the Harvard Sailing Team, sketch troupe or improv troupe? Sketch troupe. Sketch. Yeah. Sketch. They're different disciplines, guys. <laughs> but they're very close to each other in a lot of ways. Please welcome back, Rebecca Delgado-Smith. Hi. Hi. Rebecca. Yes. How are you? Thanks for being here. I'm good. I'm really good. Right. <laughs> <laughs> Did you just say that you got a new dog? I got, yeah. I mean, he's, he's, he's new to a lot of people. He, um... <laughs> He's just kind of. <laughs> he's Did he really just move here? Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> People are just starting to like get to know him on my uh, Instagram and Facebooks, you know. Did you take some time to make sure he was ready for social media before? Right, because I didn't want to introduce him and then actually not like him and return him. Oh, that's a good point. That's I, mean, I would never do that, but but and still, I'm cautious. And you already had. An existing dog. That's right, Bronco, and now we got Yogi. <laughs> Please don't judge the dog names. <laughs> those are fine dog names. Yogi came with the name. He's a. Oh really? Yes, he was a year and a half when I got him, so I found it cruel to just be like, "Now you'll be um, Constantinople." <laughs> you know, I don't know why. I was trying to think of a, a name on the spot. But that would whatever. be a. It's. Uh, Todd Glass has done this on his podcast, uh -huh. and I forget who pointed it out to him, but coming up with names on the spot is very hard. Jesus. I mean, and it really says a lot about I'm sorry, what's my your name? mind is. Trad. <laughs> Trad. <laughs> Trad. Uh, I, I always say Jasmine. I don't Jasmine. know why. Nice. My, I panic. My go-to is Marjorie. Marjorie. <laughs> Marjorie for a woman and Robert for a man. I don't know why the name Robert is so funny to me. <laughs> now, I have friends who they adopted a dog and um, his name was Colin when they adopted him and they changed it to Dennis. Oh, <laughs> so it's a real, it's a real cool. lateral move. <laughs> he does not answer to either one of them, by the way. <laughs> so he might have a third name that no one knows about. <laughs> Well, I think Yogi comes from Yogi Bear, but I like to think it comes from yogurt. So that's what I decided. His full name is Yogurt, yeah. but they call him Yogi Bear. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> the Mel Brooks character in Spaceballs. <laughs> oh, boy. <laughs> How did he get away with that? <laughs> Instead of Yoda, I'm going to call him uh, Yogurt. That's, that's good, right? Is that, is that Laughter in the aisles. <laughs> that's right. I didn't know about that. Rebecca, but the, the dogs get along. Yogi dogs get along. Not they um, they're bros, bros. Um, they love each other. Kisses. Type bros. Kisses. Yeah, brothers. Like love or brothers. They sleep together. Yes. The, so. They share a dog bed. Yes. They they have there are two dog beds next next to each other, but they choose to sleep in one. Mm. Come on, a lesson yeah. there for us all. <laughs> we should all be sleeping in the same yes. bed, <laughs> like Charlie in the Chocolate Factory. Rebecca, I'm going to look right next to you. This person, you just heard her last week on the show. Yeah. But she's back. I'm back, baby. Her name goes Amanda Lund. Amanda, welcome back. Thanks for having me. You went to a fun wedding I saw. I did. It was my best friend's wedding. Mm -hmm. I was maid of honor. Mm -hmm. um, they had a mariachi band. 
and I had a lot of fun. It looked like you had a lot I of fun. I did. I did some Instagram stories. People um, looked hammered. Yeah, yeah. I didn't, <laughs> I didn't remember, and I was like, oh my god, wow, I was such a drunk girl. Because yeah, I always like flip quickly past girls' Instagrams when it's just them like dancing like in the dark. <laughs> right. I'm like, uh, uh, uh. But then I looked back at mine, and I was doing that, but the lights were on. Yeah, and so it was it very was well just, lit. And it looked pretty, um, the videos made it look like it was just me with maybe like three other people dancing in a barn. Yes, um, it did. It looked like, oh, I guess there were only ten people at this wedding. Yeah. And they're in this vast space. But I kept doing this one move I noticed, and I didn't realize this was like a move I must do when I'm drunk. It was like this. Yeah! Oh. You make like a peace You're sign the, with your fingers. The Batusi. Yeah, and then you kind of do it, but I would do it really quick, like under a second, and then I would yeah. take it down. <laughs> it was very and only brief. do it to one eye. Yeah. Well, because you were holding the phone with the other. That's what yeah. happened, yeah. But I was pretty, I was happy with the, with the turnout of those stories. You, you should be, <laughs> because they, they were very well lit. One of my favorites was you caught Matt just straight up on his phone yeah, yeah <laughs> he was just sitting Matt there Clark, like like foot up yeah like it was he did not look like he was at a wedding at all <laughs> oh no if there's any sort of table around matt he will put his feet on it it doesn't matter where we are um but he loves to kind of put his feet up and then lean this, this is my husband <laughs> shoes on shoes on shoes oh on. yeah shoes on he's a real yeah. yokel yeah he yeah. um he loves to lean <laughs> and put his feet up. He's a casual guy, you know? It's a good quality. <laughs> <laughs> um, well, I'm glad that you made it home safe and sound. I did, in one piece. Good. <laughs> if you want to check out those Instagram stories, they have already vanished. Yeah, but may maybe <laughs> more. Maybe there'll be more. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to Spontaneous Nation. It is time to do our improv. We have selected a location from Twitter. <laughs> and we are ready to go. But first, just so as you know, in order to aid us in our storytelling, we use three sound effects that move us about in time. Let's say we need to go into the past for some reason. Somebody is having a memory. We're learning how something came to be. Anytime we need to go into the past, we'll hit this button, which emits a flashback sound effect. Now we're in the past. Let's say we want to return from a flashback back to where we were or travel into the mysterious future. We press this green button, which emits a flash forward sound effect. It rises, indicating the passage of time. Now, this button only moves us about in space, not in time. Let's say we're in a scene. We want to find out what's happening at the exact same time somewhere else. We hit this red button, the meanwhile button. Whoosh, we're over there. No time has passed. We've just moved in space. Everybody gets it. And now it is time to reveal our location provided to us by Twitter a user... Josh Betley. Congratulations, Josh Betley. We have chosen your suggestione. And that suggestion is... A mansion house. <laughs> a mansion house. We take you now... To a mansion house. Drafty in here, don't you think? Yeah, it must be on account of all the rooms. <laughs> Someone left a window open in one room and then an adjacent room or someplace down the hall. Someone's left another window open and <laughs> the wind is doing what it will. <laughs> Either way, these club soda, lime juice, and cranberry juice is really hitting the spot. Well, I'm glad you're enjoying uh, all of the drinks. I usually, uh, when I have people over, they just request the one drink, but you wanted uh, a variety. Mm. So I thought, well, you're my guest, and, you know, I want this mansion house to be a mansion home. Well, you know, <laughs> when I made the order, I assumed you would combine all of them into one glass and oh. not bring me three glasses. Oh, that makes sense. Oh, I wish I'd done that now. Uh, I wish you had two, but... Can I put my hand on your knee and look you in the eyes and confess something? Well, I wish you would. Mr. Dieterman. Yes. 
I came here to ask for your daughter's hand in marriage. Uh, Troy! Well, this is... This is... I expected this! You moved your leg away from me. I'm putting my hand back on your leg. No, that's all right. I was just su- surprised. I haven't broken eye contact. I, no, you haven't. It's remarkable. I, I've been trying to look away, but I can't. I keep following you. Your, as your head moves, my head moves. You're like one of those paintings. <laughs> one of those paintings over there. No, I'm not going to look no, at it. You want to break I eye contact. I thought I would get you. Well, honey, your boyfriend certainly is nice. I wonder how things are going downstairs with father. Oh, well, Mama, <laughs> um, I-, I can only expect father to be uh, doing his thing. <coughs> well, you know your father is a difficult man on the outside, but he sure is a softy on the inside. He sure is. And Troy, my main man, <coughs> um, I know that he's going to be really making a really good impression. I'm sure. You know my favorite quality about Troy? Uh huh. His hair. <laughs> the spikes? They're very nice. Mm hmm. I've never seen anything like it. Well, um, he comes from a very long line of uh, spiky hair. But well, that is interesting. Well, you know, I can't wait to meet his family at the uh, wedding. You're going to love them. You know, they own a, a gel plant over in. Uh, uh, Ohio. Ooh, that's right. Oh, you yeah, hear Troy's got a new girlfriend. <laughs> yeah, that's what I heard. Oh, you think we ought to let him marry? Let him marry her? <laughs> She's not one like us. She's nothing like us. I don't understand why they keep us up high. Why are we always on the fifth floor of this place that can never go down? There's no elevator or stairs in this place. Is Dad <laughs> embarrassed of us? Ted, Tro- Troy, you know he's uh, you know he got all snooty when he moved to the city. Yeah, he's a snooty, shitty guy. <laughs> oh, yes. Okay, I'm about as close to your face as I could possibly get, Mr. Dieterman. Troy, you know, I've long been protective of my little girl. Of course. Luenda, she means the world to me. <laughs> And you know, I wouldn't trust her to just go off with just anyone. I should say I wouldn't trust the the person that you would go off with. I don't really trust her either. There's something about her. She's She's I mean, she's my daughter, but she's She's so young. Troy. (laughs) What? Troy. She's what? She's barely 18. Oh, okay, Troy. (laughs) What? I'm not lying. Troy, I know. It's the way you're saying it. I'm I'm her father. I think it's an age difference. I I think it's generational. When I say she's barely 18... Stop. Troy? She's You've got to stop saying She's that. freshly 18? No, that's... We both know how old she is. There's no point in saying it. Okay. Well, how would you describe her I age? would... I'm not going to. Troy. She's insanely she, youthful. Troy, she's... Troy, Troy, she's my precious daughter. Yes, I understand. No, I, I... When I first met you... Well, I wasn't sure about you. The spikes. Then, as I got to know you, you seemed like a fine young man. I, I am. I'm college educated. Yes, that's, I'm glad that you are. And the spikes? Let me make a peace sign right next to your face and say, it's a family thing. <laughs> <laughs> so try after I got to know you, yes. Mm-hmm. I looked past the spikes. Embraced the college education idea. Everything was going great. Little speed bump a couple seconds ago with the 18 business. It's just... Stop it. Don't. She's... Troy? I'm happy to say I do give you my blessing. Oh, hell yeah, Mr. Teeterman. Woo! Let me pump this fist a couple times. Try, try. Yeah? First of all, you said a couple. Secondly, I didn't realize you had a prosthetic arm. <laughs> yeah. What? Ding, 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 ding. I'd like to give a toast. <laughs> ding, ding. Everyone listen. 
Thank you. That, that's all right. You don't have to clap, but it is nice. I, Mrs. Dieterman, would like to welcome, on behalf of my husband, Mr. Dieterman, and I, Troy's family, to our home for this wonderful engagement dinner. Yeah. 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 Well said, well said, Mrs. Dieterman. And, and you two can go ahead and use the silverware. You don't have to. No, 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 it's, no, it's too fancy. But I will smoke cigarettes. Well, that's... Could you go outside? But uh, no matter. If it doesn't look like Ren Fair food, I'm not into it. Mom. Right with the fists. Mom. A turkey leg right with the fists. <laughs> you guys are so funny. <laughs> right, Mama? <laughs> oh, they're certainly something. Do you have any gel? <sighs> well, <laughs> you said there was going to be gel, Troy. Dad, you can bring your own gel. We literally run a gel plant. Ugh. Now, I... Curious about the gel plant. You know, my husband and I are in pharmaceuticals. Yes. Are you referring to gelatin or hair gel? Oh, dab. <laughs> don't. <laughs> hair gel. Oh. Like dab, d- d- dippity do, all that. You can put it on your hair. You can put, put it on, on your, your nose. And you, you can, can put it on your legs. You can put you it can. in your shoes and make a fun noise Anywhere when you're in our hair. room. <laughs> Mom, sick. Dad. If you're wearing a fur coat, you can shove that up. Oh, please stay away from my mink. (laughs) (laughs) Uh, I've been eyeing it all night. Charlie, Linda. Yes. I, Mr. Dieterman, husband. Robert, right? Mrs. Dieterman. (laughs) Mom, Mr. Dieterman. Can I call you Bobby? We we call each other Mr. and Mrs. Dieterman around here. (laughs) We are uh, pleased to welcome you to the family, and we want you to know that uh, Troy here, despite his spikes and... Um, recently discovered uh, missing arm missing arm <laughs> he's become well part of our family oh hell yeah the <laughs> I, I hope it's not out of term for me to inquire how the arm went missing oh um. <laughs> that's a funny story <laughs> think we ought to let a three year old work on the line <laughs> definitely he can be the one to <laughs> heat up the gel <laughs> Before it gets before it gets into bottles. <laughs> I don't know nothing about kids, but I say we just let them turn him loose in the let factory. Let do it. Hey. Troy, put more arm in it. Charlie, Linda, I'm going to throw the switch to start the gel line. <laughs> okay, I'm just going to start to move the gel around with my hand. Put more arm in it. I'm doing my best. <coughs> Stop smoking next to me. <laughs> It's your father's right to smoke. Oh, oh, isn't it a nice smell? <laughs> all right, my arm is all the way in, and I'm moving it around and around. That's right, baby, just like a spoon. Yeah. Oh, sorry, forgot to throw the switch. I'll do it now. My arm is a big spoon. My arm is a big spoon. My arm is a... Ah! <laughs> oh, my God. Oh, wow. God. It was so funny. It was so funny. <laughs> <laughs> well, oh. Troy, you'd never uh, told me that story before. Yeah, it's not really one I like to lead with. Oh. <laughs> I'm sorry. Well, now that we're engaged. L- Linda, you never, you never, never came up. I guess it just never came up, <laughs> She's Troy? not really a curious girl. Hey, that, <laughs> that, comes, with, it's true. Yeah. that comes with age. She's so young right now. Yeah. How old are you anyway? I'm about to be 18. Team. Oh, fresh. 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 Yes. Oh, yes. Um, a while ago, I was three months out of being 18, and now I'm just a few weeks. Oh, yeah. She's young. Yes. You doing a prenup? I hope not. Um, <laughs> Troy? Mom? Well, because we... Not because of you fancy britches. Because of us. Jeez, if you smoke, will you shut up? <laughs> God. I'm so sorry, Mr. and Mrs. Dieterman, and of course, Luinda. Troy, that's quite all right. It's yes. Like, look, I, Mom, Dad, I just want this to go smoothly, okay? I love Luenda. I got a question. <laughs> what do the Dietermans do? They, they said that. They're in pharmaceuticals. They're pharmaceuticals. Oh, oh, what does that mean? You go yeah. to doctor's doors and say, buy our, buy our meds, get America hooked on shit? Is oh. that what you guys do? Uh, pharmaceuticals, F-A-R-M. Yeah. Oh. Not, not P-H-A-R-M. Oh. oh. So you... you Give drugs to animals? Yes, we, we do, do farm oh, medicine. That's nice. <laughs> yes, we're very concerned with cows at the moment. Yes. Did you know that cows have a lot of problems? Oh God! See, now I'm gonna cry. <laughs> you know, it's something funny. about cows just really gets to me. <laughs> really? 
It's I the think eyes. it's their eyes. They have it's those, the eyes. those bovine I know. Why some I know. Eyes. And a life without <laughs> fingers, how do you how do you enjoy smoking? They don't they can't do any of that. Mom, not everything's about smoking. Good we God. go down to the farm and just blow smoke into Cal's mouth. Yeah. We're Ooh. not supposed oh. to do that. That would explain a great deal. I think yeah. so. Yes. Well, we love cows here at the Dieterman household. It's true. Mm-hmm. Uh, we had a cow that was uh, our favorite cow. Oh. oh, growing up. Oh, it would yes. sleep in the bed. Yes. Did you put makeup Jasmine. on her? Jasmine. Oh, yes. Jasmine the cow. Jasmine. Oh, my she daughter would wonderful. dress her up. I made them matching outfits. I'll yes, she was my forget. nanny. Luinda. <laughs> Jasmine nanny. used to look after Luinda. <laughs> oh, Jasmine. I, I, I don't want to go take a bath right now, Jasmine. Why are you making me take a bath? <laughs> oh. Fine. I mean, it, it must be because I was filthy. Ah! All right. You know, do you have the ducks for my bath? All right. Yes, we... Jasmine, she died because uh, we had that human voice box implanted in her and it didn't didn't quite take. You know, I also think she was stealing from us. Mm. That is racist. <laughs> Dad. It's so hard to find good help. It truly <gasps> is. Wow, okay. Uh, Hello, can I get more drinks for anybody? <laughs> oh, oh, who's this? This is your maid? Oh, yes, this is my maid, Drusilla. How you doing, everyone? She's a casual uh, person. Three more, Troy? <laughs> yeah, please. I think I need it. You got it. Or is she get her honky tonk bar? Drusilla, we, as a matter of fact, we did find Drusilla at a honky tonk <laughs> bar many years ago. We were on a, we were doing a bit of a talent scout for potential servants. <laughs> like a reality show? Yes, we took, we got on a big bus. We drove across the country. I sang I'm the Only One by Melissa Etheridge. <laughs> what do you think, Mrs. Dieterman? Oh, I mean, let's look at this one's resume. Drusinda. Four- and I'm the only one <laughs> who'd walk across the Fires for are you, you. Are you all right? Why? <laughs> you seem very voice. emotional. Thank you. I just, I, I, I just have so much talent. Oh, she's. <laughs> she seems to be knitting a little hanky while she sings. You are knitting a little handkerchief. Look at that. It says, "Future maid." Oh, I want her, Mr. Dieterman. Mrs. Dieterman, the search is over. That's how it happened. <laughs> yes, Charlie, that is how it happened. <laughs> well, she's very sexy. <laughs> Damn. What? I'm talking about Luenda. Don't hit on the- That's what? worse. Oh, oh, fuck. Talking about you, Mrs. Dieterman. Oh, oh, no. oh Charlie. Oh, you are my making it worse. <laughs> oh, no. I'm talking about you, Oh, honey. Charlie. Oh, all right. <laughs> yeah, good. All the right. last woman here you can hit on. Ah. <sighs> Look, Mr. and Mrs. Dieterman, Linda, I, I hope that this isn't going too poorly, all right? I, I love my parents, but sometimes, I don't know, they do stuff like this. All right? You're embarrassing me. We're having a great time! Yeah, you are at my expense! Oh. Troy, 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 this is, Troy. This is just... Yes, Troy, Troy, but Dad, you go. This is just family. <laughs> it's just family. Like, when I met Mrs. Dieterman's parents, it went just about the same as it's going right now. <laughs> I'm sorry, um, Robert, uh, uh, are you wearing, uh, are you wearing tweed? Well, um, yes, I am. It's uh, fall. Oh, well, I guess it's better than mixing fabrics. <laughs> Please, bring me the ceramic bucket. Bring me the ceramic bucket. I'm, I'm, I'm on it, Jimothy. <laughs> Thank you. You're welcome. Robert, I want you to watch me do this. Oh, all right. This is because of your tweed. Mm. <laughs> oh. Daddy, please. Let your father vomit into the ceramic bucket. Marjorie, is this good? I'll take it away. I'll take it away. I'm the servant here. I I deal with buckets like these all the time. All the time? Thank you, Patty. Mother, father, I believe um, Robert has a question he'd like to ask you. Yes. um, Mr. and Mrs. Carnival. Spit it out. Mr. and Mrs. Carnabo, I would like your 
blessing to ask for your daughter's hand in marriage. Give me the ceramic bucket. Oh dear. Uh, <laughs> I'm sorry. Get it all out, dear. How can he Get have it all left? out, dear? How much shrimp cocktail did he eat? Well, we had extras this morning. <sighs> That's right. We didn't want it to go to waste. <laughs> oh, all right. Oh, I don't know, dear. <sighs> there aren't other options right now. This is our only option. Very well. We must get her out of the house. We have to. Because I've been wanting to ravish you in the dining room for 35 years. Mother, we're listening to you. I know. You always you do this. You must know. You always do this to me, you perverse people. I've been too ashamed with our daughter running around. I won't give it up. I know. For 35 years, which is how old our daughter is. I've been waiting for you to remove my corset, <laughs> jump skirt, all of it, and take me right here on this dining room table. Marjorie, you didn't tell me you were freshly 35. <laughs> well, I didn't want you to be deterred. I, I'm ready, I promise you. I'm, I'm ready to be a wife. I know how to cook. I can cook a carrot cake. I can cook a loaf of bread and a chicken. That's all I need. <laughs> you are old. Oh, I have a great plastic surgeon. <laughs> you look fantastic. Is everyone ready for carrot cake? Oh. oh. Mama's favorite. <laughs> it's the only way to eat a carrot. Luenda, you still have some bread and chicken left. Oh, I'm not hungry. Oh, honey, please eat up. You're wasting away to nothing. Uh, well, I'm so young and my metabolism is so high. <laughs> I just want to look my best for this uh, upcoming wedding day. Oh. What day are you going to do it? <laughs> oh, uh, well, Troy and I still have to decide. <laughs> and are you thinking a, a spring affair or a fall foray? <laughs> well, Will I, it I be a fall foray? I, I mean, really, it's such a personal decision. I feel like Troy and I should just make it, you know, by ourselves. What without... about an autumn occasion? I told you I didn't want to bring this up around our parents. I'm sorry, it came up. We can hear you. Yeah, I know. I'm whispering across the table because oh. I was hoping that you could pick up on the fact that I don't want to talk about this right now. <sighs> you Look. know, a, a wedding date is so, so personal. Is it? Don't you I, blast it's not about it to everybody? You. <laughs> it's about everyone else. I'm pretty sure you sent it Aren't to there I don't, literal please. announcements. I just don't want anyone to know about the exact date. You announce the date twice. Sometimes Save it goes the, the paper. Dates. Exactly. <laughs> At least promise me you'll have a jazz band. <laughs> well, now, Lowinda, this is non-negotiable. Uh, you promise your mother there will be a jazz band. Uh, Troy, is it okay if we have a jazz band? Look at my hair. Look at my style. Troy. I fucking hate jazz. Whoa. Troy! Troy! Okay. Yeah, that's my son. Well, Mom, Dad, I think the, the compromise would be a punk jazz band. Excuse me? Oh, like the squirrel me? nut zippers? <laughs> <laughs> Look, I'm really young, and I know what's up and up with all the cool, cool stuff. Sounds like it. <laughs> <laughs> and I know there's this really awesome band called the... Rabbit hairs, and they love. <laughs> okay. They love mixing all the styles. Yeah, now, mostly swing and ska. Pick it up. But also jazz and punk. Sure. <laughs> They'd be perfect for it. Pick it up. Oh, I'm oh, playing fives. Are, are you in this band? Yeah, I want to play my own wedding. All right, pick it up. Troy, Troy, are you skanking at the dinner table? <laughs> Hell yeah. Ooh, ah. Oh God, the, pick it up. that arm. <laughs> yeah, actually, actually, will you pick up my arm? Thank you. Pick it up. I got Shit. that. Mr. Dieterman, would you assist me with the cake in the kitchen for a moment? Yes, oh. I will, Mrs. Dieterman. I'm going to tell secrets. Mr. Dieterman, I don't think I like this Troy character anymore. Mrs. Dieterman, you took the words right out of my mouth. I think we need to put an end to these pending nuptials. I agree, but how? Hmm. Poison? <laughs> no, is that too much? I'm sorry. I was <laughs> That's mean, isn't it? Let's it's a it's I mean, it's it's out there, but we can start there. We can pull it back a little bit and then I'd be happy to poison anything you need. Oh, you we, know. Drusilla. we know Drusilla. We know Drusilla. Love and beyond. That's my motto. Oh. You're so sweet. Drusilla, you've performed oh. so many poisonings for us in the yeah. past. Yes, you've killed so many people. Yeah. Children, men, women. Mostly children, though, right? Yeah. <laughs> a lot of children. At least, well. A lot of children. 
So, Troy, how do you think it went? I don't know. I really didn't want to let anyone know about my swing ska obsession. Oh, I'm so <laughs> sorry. And I just don't want them knowing when it's going to be. Yeah, Is that I, too much to ask for? No. I mean, it's definitely unorthodox, but I support you in that. And I support you, which is why we love each other so much. Do you think that it's a bad sign your parents left as soon as I told them about the swing ska obsession? <laughs> well, knowing Mama and Papa, they're probably going to want to poison you. What? Yes, I didn't want to bring this up. <laughs> All right, it's the, it's the night of our double suicide. <laughs> we said we were going to do it the minute Troy got engaged. Ah, right in front of everybody. So you're saying we should go in there and blow our brains out? <laughs> in front of everyone. The last thing they see is our gel heads all over the ceiling. All right. Who wants carrot cake? Let's go in there. <laughs> oh, this carrot cake is delicious. Troy, mm. eat up. Mm. So fibrous. I love it. I don't know. Oh, how the, who let the cow oh, in here? Drusilla, did you let a cow in here? <laughs> Yvonne, why aren't you in the yard? They're gonna kill themselves. <laughs> what? What? Hey. Oh, oh my god! Oh, Charlie! Oh no! Joy! His oh, father's my god. dead! Oh. oh my god! Oh no! He was supposed to shoot me in the head, oh. and I was gonna shoot him! And now oh, here wait, I wait. am! Hold on a second. <laughs> he was going to shoot you in the head, yeah. and then you were going to shoot him? At the same time. Oh, at the same time, I see, I see. Well, I guess your son will have to do it. This no, what? And, and Mrs. Dieterman. Charlie. Well, you destroy. shoot your mom. I deserve it. Charlie. Hey, hold on. Mr. Dieterman just trash, chastised my dead father. <laughs> well, he look, he's bleeding all over the carpet. I'm the reason that you lost your arm. Put me out of my misery. Troy. You think I smoke because I like it? I racked with guilt over your arm. Yeah. Do it! You gotta do it. But first, let's have a date, honey, please. <laughs> Troy, what do you think? Should we give these guys a date before guess, your mom dies? I guess the only compromise is I'll agree to a jazz band, we'll, you'll pick a date, and I'll shoot my mom in the head. Yes. Well, that sounds perfect. Yes, fine with me. Troy, I was right about you after all. Thanks, Mr. Dieterman. God, I love your super, super young daughter. Oh. Troy, I'm only doing this for her. Can I say one thing? <laughs> sure, Mom. God bless us, everyone. <laughs> I knew you were going to say that, Mom. <laughs> What's the date? October 31st. Oh, oh Halloween! Happy Halloween! Halloween. Happy Halloween. I, love Halloween. I love Halloween! I love it! I'm so young! Hooray. I'm going to be a sexy wa bride. <laughs> Theme wedding. Yeah. Yeah. Theme wedding. <laughs> I'm going to be a sexy groom. Yeah! <laughs> and I'm the only one. Oh, <laughs> Drew Drew Silla. Silla. Oh, 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 Drew you're not coming. You're gonna be working it. <laughs> and it all happened in a place called Spontanea Nation. Tim Boltz, <laughs> <laughs> what do you want to tell the people about? Where can they find you online? They can find me online at Tim underscore Boltz, retweeting the things I get tagged in, and not much <laughs> else, baby. <laughs> <laughs> oh, Brad. Amanda Lund, same things. At Amanda Fun Buns across all social media platforms. <laughs> Rebecca. At Smith Ray Bay. Look for pictures of Yogi. There you go. Uh, guys, what are your individual Twitter handles? At Brian Safi, it's Brian with the Y. At Gibbertron, it's my last name if I was a robot. <laughs> <laughs> Folks, she spelled it out for you. It doesn't get much simpler. Ladies and gentlemen, follow Eben Schletter on all the things. On all the things, he is Eben Schletter. How do you find Evan Schletter, you might ask? Well, it's simple. You just put his name into the internet. It goes like this. E-B-A-N-S-C-H-L-E-T-T-E-R. As for me? <laughs> <laughs> Don't forget, Brooklyn, Super Ego, and Spontaneous Nation are coming to the Bell House in November, November 11th and 12th. Uh, Super Ego on the 11th, Spontaneous Nation on the 12th. Tickets are sold out as of this recording, but as it gets closer to the date, look online for people who did not manage their time correctly <laughs> and are looking to unload tickets. Um, I think that's all I can think of for now. Oh, you know what? Hey, give us a review on Apple Podcasts or wherever. It helps increase our standing in the rankings, and it helps people be more aware of the show. Um, and you can get creative. You can say whatever you want. How about this? Give a good review. That's fun. I'll read it on the air. How do you like that? Interactive. 
finally getting around to it. Thank you to Earwolf for hosting the podcast. Thank you to Engineer Ryan for engineering us all the way to the end of the show. Thank you to Chef Kevin for recording us for YouTube, the streaming video channel. (laughs) 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 Goodbye forever until next week. This is Paul F. Tompkins saying Semper in Presenti.